All right, grab your cup of coffee or water or whatever it is. Welcome Meg Rentschler, who's my guest today. We're gonna have a grand time. And before we start, I just wanna remind you what this is about. Almost seven years ago, I really got the inspiration from this lady who was podcasting in her areas of expertise you'll hear about before me. And I thought, hmm, she's so good. She's got an expertise. Why shouldn't I try it? Stay tuned for Meg Rentschler. I always want to remind people that the beautiful clothes I wear are from Betty Ryder Boutique at Preston Center. And I always thank her so very much because there's no way I could afford all the clothes you'd have to wear, Meg, right? On camera, time after time, Meg, I just thank you. I want you to go and see her. Betty Ryder Boutique. All right, let's get going. Uh, you know, I just want to remind everyone what this show is about. It really is trying to enlighten all of you and delve into the experiences in doing so of leaders and those who are doing it right in their areas of expertise. And that just means staying authentic, being real, not letting success go to the head and never having the nose up and looking down at anybody else. And that's what our show is about. So stay tuned. Welcome to our podcast, Doing It Right. This podcast reveals authentic stories from successful leaders doing it right. It's about their journey to become a leader, their choices, motivations, and lessons. In essence, how they built successful personal brands. Your host is Valerie Sokolowski, author of eight leadership books and nationally known as an authority on executive presence and personal branding. Let's get started. Here's Valerie. Okay, my guest today is Meg Rentschler, who is a psychotherapist and a business owner. She had a private practice for more than two decades. And so Meg has the benefit of deeply understanding people and their challenges. And now she shares how she built, built a successful business on her coaching practice show called Star Coach. Hi, Meg. <laughs> Hi, Valerie. It's <laughs> We've seen each other a lot in our ICF International Coach uh, meetings, and I was next door almost rooming with you. How many years ago, how did you get started from being a psychotherapist with your own practice, then an executive coach, and now putting it all together, and you are a podcaster before me. Tell us. Well, thank you for that, Valerie. You're and and I just want everyone to know from your introduction, you said it's about being authentic, it's about being genuine, and that is something that you give in spades. I met you, you. probably ten years ago now, and what I've always known I thought this woman has all these books that she's written she's a speaker she has gone into these incredible companies and helped their leaders be better and she is as genuine and warm and radiant as anybody oh, could be so it is a joy to know you it is a pleasure to be here with you and um, and let's do it right <laughs> Let's do it right do it right let's do it right, right. so with that um, you know, my, my journey from psychotherapist to coach was really about paying attention to what people need, mm -hmm. but not just what others needed, what I needed. Because if, if I believe that if we don't pay attention to what our soul is calling for, what our spirit needs, um, we're not going to be the best we can be for the people that we serve. Hmm. So I was incredibly motivated to be a therapist. I had actually read an article when I was about 13 years old in one of the Detroit newspapers about runaways hmm. and the plight of runaway children. And I thought, I want to work with kids to get past that kind of heartache, that kind of lost um, you know, and obviously it's a family systems issue. I mean, kids don't tend to run away from healthy families, although, you know, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. There's, everything's unique. But um, within that, that's when I um, got my master's of social work from the University of Michigan and spent over 20 years 
in a psychotherapy practice, working with families, working with children. Um, sort of over that time, it evolved that I was working more and more with adults in mm. workplaces um, because employee assistance programs would refer people to me. And I began to see a pattern, Valerie, that, that spoke to my soul, which was um, there are so many people who are stressed and overwhelmed from their work environments. That's sad. It is. Very and sad. and that's where we're going to spend a whole lot of our time, right? During the day. I mean, not everybody right. has a beautiful, you know, workplace to be able to come to and, and people who understand them. And what I was noticing was that not only were people um, maybe asking to do more with less, all the things that, that we deal with, but they were also being asked to be leaders without being taught how to be leaders. Oh, even back then even back then so it was this was like in the i'd already been a therapist for over 20 years so it was probably in the early 2000s i just saw this massive increase of these people coming into my therapy practice who wanted to be put on disability who needed coping mm. mechanisms who, who and so we'd work to kind of make things work and then they'd go back to work and they'd come back the next week and they'd be like oh. the dip wasn't yeah deep the, yeah the, yeah <laughs> so i needed to pay attention to also what was happening to me. I was starting to feel a bit burnt out and overwhelmed with this experience. And I thought, we need to make working places healthier. Right. We need to help people know how to lead, be led by people who understand humans, mm -hmm. who understand that we have needs and, and that we are creative and, and resourceful, but that we need to put that all together. So that's, um, that was early 2000s, and I went into, I thought, oh, there's this thing called executive coaching. <laughs> Maybe I could go into organizations and help their leaders better understand how to empower their people. So I paid attention to what my gut was telling me, what my heart was telling me, and also looked for what's out there that's going to meet the need that I have that I believe I could better serve people. And that's when I began my transition from something I'd done for a really long time that I really loved into something else. You know, Meg, what, what you just described is so powerful because I believe that oftentimes people sort of discount a path that's pulling them, yes. like pulling them, and life can happen in keeping them back, back, back yes. when life is pulling, pulling, pulling. I think there's a good message uh, for you on that. And one of your top takeaways you shared, Meg, is, is clarity of your passions. Because if God gives you something that is a passion, it's usually a gift and a talent that you could do it yeah. or he wouldn't put it there, right? So I love this top takeaway. Clarity on your passions allows you to radiate, like Meg certainly does, her positivity, radiate positivity to others. And you are a, a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. I want to hear a little bit more about um, in what you're doing now. Give us an example, Meg, of, of maybe a therapeutic technique mm -hmm. that you've adapted now into the coaching practice. Oh, what a great question. Thank you. So, <laughs> yes, what a great question. So, um, one of my favorite interviews on my show is with a, a woman named Kimia Saroff. She's a medical doctor who uh, works with physicians around trauma coaching, mm. uh, trauma mitigated coaching. And what she said during her interview, which is so true, is coaching is not therapy, but it is very therapeutic. And I love that. Yeah, and it, it's so spot on. So yeah. what I do as a coach, is actually very similar is what I did as a therapist. It's the issues that we deal with that are different. So, uh, you know, as a therapist, I had to learn to listen deeply, deeply listen, connect with people through both what they were saying and what wasn't being said. Hear those gaps mm. between what we're able to share and sort of some of those things that only outside eyes and outside ears can hear because we're so embedded in our stuff, right? I mean, our stuff, our <laughs> daily life is really overwhelming sometimes and, and it's hard to see the forest for the trees. But when you're talking with somebody who's not 
in the weeds the way that you are, you can say, I'm hearing this and I'm seeing this or I'm also hearing this. How do those go together for you? Mm -hmm. How does and often that awareness open you know, begins to open up that aperture, open up understanding and and we can explore how do they go together maybe they don't go together and i've always thought that they do or maybe this belief i thought really served me really doesn't and and that is as as appropriate for coaching as it is for therapy well said and even greater thing to tag it to is that was a great question i think meg that a leader could say to a teammate absolutely take it from there so that's one of the things, you know, life evolves, right? So I, I was a therapist and then I went into executive coaching with this passion. I'm going to help organizations be healthier. And then along the way was like invited to join faculty of, of two coaching programs and thought well, I, that wasn't really. But if my passion, if my desire was to help organizations be healthier, how much better would that be if if I was helping coaches be better. And then the ripple effect of that, Meg can do so much, but Meg and Valerie can do so much. And then Meg and all these other, so now training over a hundred coaches a year, just imagine the ripple effect there, mm -hmm. right? So with that, the other door that opened that I was not knowing was gonna open was that by teaching what I teach to coaches, organizations started approaching me and saying, can you teach our leaders mm -hmm. how to use these skills not to become professional coaches but to use coaching in their leadership to ask better questions to go. listen more deeply and i can tell you i've had the honor of doing that with hundreds of leaders across the country and the things that we see valerie i mean productivity goes up engagement goes up people leaving the company goes down Be why because they feel valued, they yes. feel listened to. And leaders are now like lighting up and saying, I needed this so bad you gave me tools for my toolbox mm -hmm. that helped me be a better leader. Because I believe that people really wanna do the best they can. They're just not always given the tools to do that. So when we can help leaders say, hmm, well, what have you already tried? What might what what's the result you're looking for mm -hmm. because what we tend to do when we don't have skills to pull the greatness from the other person mm -hmm. we jump into fix right so, so easy so what so i say mm -hmm. valerie do this and valerie says yeah i've already tried that well <laughs> valerie do this well and then we're doing a ping pong match how much traction are we getting very little or you say okay meg i'll do that and you go off to do it because uh, as your leader i told you that that's what you need to do mm -hmm. but what's your buy-in and what's your investment and what's your are you really or are you just doing it because i told you to do it you know that's a great story meg and it triggers an example where before i learned the wonderful skills now that have have uh, helped me so much in coaching leaders I had an executive who would come to the sessions and he would then, people flew in to be coached. That was great. Yeah, that was a while that ago. That was great. That <laughs> yeah. was a while ago. Well, you know, I'm only 39 going I whatever. know, but back in, when you were 35, <laughs> people did that. <laughs> and so we talked about just that and what he was going to go back and put into action. And about a week later, I called his office and his EA answered. And I said something like, well, I'm so glad to talk to you on the phone. And I understand that your boss is doing such and such and such. And what do you think about that? <laughs> Over the phone, I could almost see because I could hear this blank. And she said, oh, really? Oh, is that what's happening that I didn't see? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that was mm -hmm. so sad, which says, yeah. Also, that is unlike most people. That's the only person in my coaching career that fooled me. And guess what? He was fired about two months after that. Well, because nobody really benefits from That's that. That's exactly right. 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 And, and no. really within that, it, it's really fooling himself in, in, in many ways. I mean, Absolutely. you know, the whole concept of meeting with somebody to grow and expand and, and stretch your muscles is so that you can feel more confident and engaged confidence and 
and then you can help others do that as well. So Meg, if, uh, if someone's listening or watching, I'm sure they're wondering what might be some good questions that they could ask their boss regarding their own career or a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, give us an idea of an actual challenge that an individual had and how you mm -hmm. helped them Such a, handle it. She's asking us great questions today. <laughs> so, you know, when we face things with curiosity and wonder rather than knowing, even about our own career. So it might be if, if you're looking to move up, get engaged and interested in what, what was the path like for your boss? What, what challenges did that person reach? How did they overcome those challenges? What do they see when they see you? And, and it takes, so this is what I believe to be, I'm going a little bit off the path here, but follow me and, and we'll come back, is that in my experience, both as a therapist, as a coach, and as a human being, because I'm as guilty of this as any, we spend so much energy putting our time into other people's demands. What do people want from us? What do, what do we need to do now? What's the next demand on our plate? That we don't necessarily spend time thinking about, what do I want for myself? What are the goals that I'm working toward? So if you are in a work situation, my first question to you would be, how clear are you about where you want to go? Do you allow yourself to dream, to think about what does the next step look like? The clearer you are about your passion, the more mm -hmm. informed you're going to be when you approach your boss about the potential path towards that. And that you know, in some ways, it's got to be kind of a win-win. How can you make it um, also something that that person wants to engage in? I would love to yeah. believe that every boss wants what's best for their people. I've just worked with too many people who are like, yeah, but that's my that's my superstar. I don't want them to kind of go to the next oh, level. So then that yeah, involves kind of working with that person about like, no kidding, what's the real goal of leadership right. here? Yeah. Self, selfish. Okay, so Meg, I've got some questions about the challenges that leaders have today, and uh, I'll just ask you, what is the number one, number one challenge that people come and tell you about, and has it changed? Wow. Um, so I would say number one uh, might very well be keeping people engaged and, and enthusiastic about the work that they do. Mm -hmm. And so has that changed? What I've seen over the past 15, 16 years that I've been at Coach, boy, am I aging myself, because I already <laughs> said I was a therapist for 20. Nobody needs to do the math. <laughs> so um, what I have seen is a shift away from me, 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 sort of what can I do to grow, what can I do to to kind of show up as, as my best, well, like, so that I look good, versus now there's a lot of emphasis around how can I help my people be the best they can be? I, I think that's that, great. Did, have you seen that same I have, thing? and I'm so glad. Yeah, yes. so, because that's the shift. That's mm -hmm. the difference. We can all do so much more lifting together mm -hmm. than all of us individually. So the, the power of the lift together. So mm -hmm. what I've seen that's super exciting to me is leaders saying, how do I help empower my people? How do I move away from this learned helplessness where I'm just going to feed you? I'm, you're the little bird, and I'm going to give you the worm. <laughs> give you the worm. Give you the worm. <laughs> Instead, it's like, what can we do to imp to get people to use what's between their ears? Is that emotional intelligence? Well, I think it goes beyond. It's definitely emotional intelligence, but I think it's also believing that people are in their positions for a reason too. Like mm -hmm. they were hired for a reason, not just because you're the leader, the great leader who's going to make them do whatever. No, like they have skills and talents and resources. Let's tap into those. And when we tap into those, what happens? People wanna stay longer because they feel valued. And then we have people with more experience on our team. Cause come on, let's be serious. If we've got a bunch of newbies on our team and that's all we have all the time because we're losing people because they don't feel valued or challenged, mm -hmm. then we're always in that place of building people. Mm -hmm. So 
what I've seen as a shift is leaders being like pumped and excited about how can I look at this person as a talented, resourceful person that I don't have to solve everything. First thing I hear from leaders when I do trainings around how to empower their people is, you mean I don't have to solve everything myself? It's this great sigh of relief. Bricks off yes. the shoulders. The bricks come off. <laughs> and then it's like, oh. And instead of people being annoyed by that, they actually love that. And my team is staying longer. And they're growing. And they're maturing because I'm believing in them as people. So good. It's, it's really so good. And it's so simple. And why did it ever shift to anything else? So, Megan, your expertise, what is one Let's just say the minute someone gets to the office or is at home in their office, one thought maybe. You said you write something down every day. I do. Day. Mm -hmm. All right. So what would be one thought you would like to just interject into any kind of a leader? And we're talking about, when we say leader, right, you know this, business owner, entrepreneur, uh, Mom, dad. Exactly. Uh, any, leader. any person who works can be a leader. And I don't think people realize that. And here's why. When I've done keynotes, mm -hmm. I will say, first, first off, I will say, first of all, I just want to be sure we're on the same page. How many of you are leaders? And Meg, if, if it's a big audience, maybe, oh, a fraction. Yeah, yeah. like... <laughs> And all I have to do is say, let me ask it again, and everybody raise your hand. Yeah. But the the word leader is right. is mis, a misnomer. Everyone can be a leader. And everyone has that opportunity. Every Leadership day. Yeah. every single day. So yeah. it's, you know, how am I showing up? How am I, you know, it, whether I have a, a paid job, whether I'm in the community setting an example, we're all leaders. We all have that capability within us. So when we are really accessing that ability, let's go back to what we said earlier. How clear are we? How mm -hmm. clear are we? So what I do every single day is I write down my goals. I every write down day. And, I, and I write down, and it's that. not just, it's, it, and it, does it come out the exact same every single day? No, because I might feel like there's a different priority. Because you're evolving. Then. Yeah, because I'm evolving, and, <laughs> but I'm writing down, and I'm not writing down, I want da 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 da, because then it's just, I want, I am X, Y, and Z. Oh, I am right. doing this. I have. X number of downloads for my podcast. I am traveling with my family. I am, you know, um, seeing X number of clients. Whatever it is, it is in the moment. It is pre and I am writing it down every day. And this is what's happened over the course of time that I've done that. My brain is starting to like click like, oh, you're doing that. Therefore, this opportunity is opening up to you. This resource becomes available. I, it might sound woo-woo, it might sound crazy, but I'm telling you, our brains are incredible tools. And when we tell our brains, this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm having happen in my life, our brain, our spirit, I believe the, the, all the powers that be come together and say, okay, this is what you need to make that happen. But if I am instead just responding to what the university wants me to do and what my husband wants me to do and what my clients need, I mean, I am responding to all those things, but I'm also clear about what are my goals? What am I striving for? Because until I put those front and center, everybody else's front and center takes over. You know what? That is so inspirational, Meg, for everyone watching and listening because the world today, let's just be honest, has a way of pulling us down and tearing us apart and sometimes really affecting our own well-being. Right. I mean, I'm going to be honest. There are days that I just think, is this really making an impact? It's not like the podcast, everybody says something about the podcast right, right? right. I oh boy when you get an email that says oh, thank you for this doesn't oh, it light up your day yes so listeners watchers <laughs> yeah fyi <laughs> let, let light up know. valerie's day and meg too um because we're doing it 
through our passion right. that truly uh, we, we're doing it to impact others. I was thinking about just earlier you said authenticity and what really is it. And I don't know, it just came to me this morning that it's just being real in who you really are. Start with that. Mm-hmm. Who, you, who are you really? You know, are you putting on a mask for the day or totally vulnerable for the day? And what are you really about? You know, what are you really in your own heart putting out there intentionally? Mm -hmm. Because as I say, I think the world, for a lot of leaders that I'm coaching, is such a pressure pot and we've got to hit that ROI, mm-hmm. ROI. I don't know if you've coached a lot of oh, sales people, yeah. but oh, mm, yeah. got to hit the ROI. Anyway, it's not easy for a leader today. So what is one, stra- one give us some strategy or tools or whatever uh, that you would suggest someone who's struggling with that self-doubt. It's called imposter syndrome. We all have it, all right, admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in your in your expertise, both as a psychotherapist and executive coach, any advice? Oh, so you are asking the best questions today. <laughs> so within that, I would I would say that part of that whole concept of imposter syndrome or feeling a lack of confidence is that often we feel when we're starting something new that it's like we're at at stage one versus, yeah, I might be starting this new, but I wasn't born yesterday. So what am I taking? What are the transferable skills? And along with writing down our goals, are you writing down what do I believe to be true about myself, about people? What are the skills that I have that are coming? And you know what? There are so many things that we have in the way of skills that we just don't even give ourselves credit for. Like, am I a really good listener? Do I ask great questions? Do I care deeply about people? Mm-hmm. Am I, you know, am I really creative and and just had forgotten about that? Because we, we have a tendency to cover our talents instead of letting them spring forth. So, so once again, clarity. We <laughs> got to get clear about what are those strengths that I bring forward? What are the things that make me unique? And own those. It's very truthfully, I'll tell when I first became an executive coach, so this was back in like the early 2000s, I put a cover over the fact that I had been a therapist for over 20 years. I thought, who's going to want an executive coach who was a therapist? Oh, they might get too deep. (laughs) Ooh, it might be. Or, you know, everybody everybody wants, I was making all sorts of assumptions. Watch your assumptions. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, everybody's going to want somebody who was in a, in leadership position in an organization. Well, I had been in a leadership position in an organization, but still I was a therapist. So long story (laughs) short, it took a little bit for me to like say, oh, it's that differentiator, it's that strength that I have Mm -hmm. that actually is what people are drawn to. I don't need to be covering it up. It's kind of silly to put it under a bushel basket. Let's let the light shine. And so for anybody who's wondering, Am I really good in this role or do I deserve to be here or do Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. And own what makes you unique and be intentional about it to Valerie's. I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, I will just put a plug in. A lot of that is in the work of personal branding. (laughs) And also you said it well. Said another way, people don't realize those skills and their talents because they live in their own skin. So sometimes it takes uh, an outside perspective and you are so good at that. How many times, Valerie, have you said something to somebody that you think is just so common sense Uh and it has shifted their world? They're like, oh, I never thought about it that way. Or, oh my gosh, that is Uh coming from your, your talents and your, your skill just is, it's like breathing to you. And so we tend to minimize what comes easy. But you know what, people? That's what people need from you is what what's like breathing for you. So take that to, that's super good. <laughs> take that to listening. Every single one of you in the audience 
uh, this is just a tip, and, it, and you're the one that said it, which is listen with a different ear now after watching and listening to this show. Listen for those times, right? I'm just kind of giving yeah. advice backward, too, yeah. where someone says, That's, that was interesting, or I hadn't thought of that, or anything that's self-affirming to the point that you have stuff in you that other people don't have, or at least at the moment they don't right. see. And, and course, write it down and write because it you'll down. forget. You'll think, yes, what so was true. that thing that somebody said to me? So oh, keep an yes. ongoing notes in your phone or something because uh, when you write it down, you <laughs> will, when you're at that place of what makes me special, you'll have it. And write them down at night. I keep a note. I mean, seriously, think about this. You would know this. What is it about at night? One more point, because I think this is so interesting to ask a psychotherapist. At night, when we go to sleep, what is it about our brain that comes up with sometimes a really good idea that we couldn't have thought out? Well, I think, and especially <laughs> right before we go to bed is a great time to kind of plant those seeds for what do I want to think about? How do I want to, what do I, what, what's an issue that I'm trying to solve? Our brain, when it slows down and it doesn't have all those distractions, will begin to solve things for us. Our brain is amazing. So keep a yeah. pad by your bed because you might very well wake up with an aha. Uh -huh. My aha's uh come in the shower. In the shower. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that. What's mm -hmm. that about? Well, you're just relaxed. You're kind of doing a routine task and maybe kind of thinking about things in the in the back end. And all of a sudden, these, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Jack Canfield, the author of uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Mm -hmm. He keeps a whiteboard in his shower. <laughs> now, I've never been in his shower. I don't know, but, but he has written about the fact that he keeps a whiteboard in his shower because oh, that's where his ideas come out, and he captures them. <laughs> so, audience, where do your ideas come out? Thank where you do your that. ideas come yeah, out? Really? Yeah. All right, you can ask that question in the comments. And listen, we as podcasters watch and listen and and read every single comment so comment ask questions we we're real we'll get back to you people say will you really get back to everybody absolutely absolutely, absolutely. every post every question every reply and you've done it and i've answered you mm -hmm. Why would we not? It's not authentic if you don't. Meg, this has been so fun. Valerie, you're one of my favorite people. Thank you for letting <laughs> me spend time with you today. Absolutely. Well, you can tell she has a little positivity going on for her. I hope you've enjoyed this program today with my special guest. And listen up. Hit the red button. That's the only subscribe button, I mean. That's the only way Meg and I know that we're growing an audience and i say that because i was listening to lots of podcasts meg before i were one <laughs> and i never hit the subscribe button i just kept listening well then how does the person who puts the effort into it know that it's making any difference well and if you ever put something special out there that isn't in your normal feed they're gonna miss it because if they haven't subscribed but they'll there get everything that you put out if they subscribe there to you. you go and in the banner you see how you can subscribe to star coach which is her podcast and don't miss it it's always wonderful stories from the coaching community, and they know a heck of a lot about life, don't they? they? Do, and it's about leadership, right? Yes. So, um, so thank you, thank you so much for it's that. It's been a joy. Thank you. Now, stay tuned because I always have a Valerieism, and today it is this: sometimes leaders have to zig when others zag. I just love that. Let me say it again. <laughs> so me sometimes leaders have to zig when others zag and i'll tell you why i thought that was a good one for today meg has talked about in her career how she has transitioned there's another word for it transition from one thing to another so don't you dare get stuck in something you feel like you're stuck in you can zig when you need to zig and zag when you need to zag just don't stay in the rut of where you are and that's my valerieism today and until next time stay real stay authentic and people will come to you you will attract them because you are real right Meg? absolutely that's what your magnetic is about cheers, cheers. until next time bye for now
Thanks for listening. To receive Valerie's voice, free monthly leadership tips, and to learn more about her leadership programs and coaching, visit her website, ValerieAndCompany.com. Next week, we'll be here again to inspire, engage, and equip you with teachable points of view from successful leaders who have been doing it right. Until then, lead authentically.